All right, so one last PowerPoint related to DNA replication and uh, in particular the end replication problem and telomerase. Now, this is a relatively old paper. It's, uh, I mean, it's pretty old, 1998, point where some of your students may not have, well, you've probably been born, but not, not by much. Um, so my daughter was born in 1998, <laughs> so so she's going off to college next year, so I know it's, it's a long time ago. Uh, but this was an important paper because it was the first um, paper to show that this enzyme telomerase was, uh, was, co was necessary or it could actually ex extend the life of of cells. So they were looking at cells in culture and then they were adding telomerase to these cells and then measuring how long they lived afterwards. So it's a pretty straightforward paper um, and I just I like it just because it's um, some of the techniques are a little bit different that uh, you know they're not just real standard things you would see um, but um, it's important to start to get into the uh, primary literature when we're thinking about these things and um, w you know, when we talk about things like telomerase, it's it's great to say, oh well, when uh, chromosomes get shorter, then the cells die, and if we add telomerase, the cells will live longer. Uh, but you have to uh, demonstrate these things; you can't just sort of claim them. And so it's it's in this is a good paper in terms of how it goes about establishing a story using several lines of evidence. Um, and so let's just get right to it. And so this it's good if you read this paper, which you should. It's part of the assignment uh, for this week. Is uh, it gives a nice um, introduction into what telomeres are and telomerases. And so it, it talks about the um, end replication problem a little bit and how telomerase solves it. And so it it in the introduction it. it mentions that the ends of chromosomes are capped with structures called telomeres. Now we've looked at it in terms of the uh, t the, the re repeats that are involved. So we know from previous stuff that um, we've got the three prime end of the chromosome. We've got an end replication problem telomerase comes along and adds on these repeats in humans the sequence is that and it adds that on a few times and then we can kind of fill in that gap not the whole gap but almost and then but there's more to it uh, this structure actually gets bound by various proteins and so the the telomere itself is a more complex structure and its overall function is to protect the end of chromosomes. So there's a couple things that can happen. So certainly if, it, if they don't get protected each time the cell divides, the chromosome gets shorter. But also what can happen is if you just kind of have this dangling end here, and then you have another chromosome with a dangling end, Sometimes these ends will kind of stick together and you end up with chromosomes that aren't supposed to be stuck together, kind of sticking together. And so you can get lots of abnormalities and that sort of thing uh, if you don't protect the ends of the chromosome. So you need, to, you need to protect the ends and you put on this sort of cap and together all of that stuff is called the telomere. All right, so... The ends of the chromosomes are capped with structures called telomeres. Uh, the DNA sequence part of that telomeres are these um, repeats. And uh, they're about, this should be 1,000, 15,000. So 15 KB long. So that's pretty long. So that's a lot of repeats. You know, so there's 15,000. There's, you know, so that's, that's lots and lots of repeats. Um, telomerase is the enzyme that adds these repeats to the end of the chromosome. Uh, telomerase consists of two parts, so it's a ribonucleoprotein, and the protein part is called H-TERT, and that stands for human uh, telomerase reverse 
transcriptase. Um, the RNA component sometimes is called Turk telomerase um, RNA component, and so we'll see what what they call it in here. <coughs> All right, and so the RNA component has that sequence, which is the template for adding that sequence onto the end of the chromosome. So we all know that from chapter 12. Now, in in this um, case, the so this is they're just defining this idea of cellular senescence. So in organisms, cells divide, then they divide some more. And then at some point they stop dividing, and then they just kind of exist for a while, and then eventually they die. And there's two ways that cells can die: they can divide by die by a process called senescence, which is just sort of just kind of a not really an active death; it's just sort of a sort of a death. I mean, just just kind of over time they just die. And then there's another process called apoptosis which is a more active process where the cell essentially destroys itself and they call it cell suicide. Um, but when we're talking about just sort of natural cell aging, um, senescence is the type of cell death that we're talking about. Um, and for a while, they, they're alive, but they're not dividing, but eventually they, they, they will die. Um, and there's a certain number of times that cells will divide before they enter senescence and if you isolate cells from older individuals they only have so many uh, divisions left before they enter senescence so the idea is that that telomerase or that telomere loss might be a way for a cell to know when it's supposed to die or when it's supposed to enter um, senescence so at each cell division so you have cell dividing it's got a chromosome, and then when it divides, the chromosome gets shorter. And that's because most cells don't express telomerase. Now, we're not used to thinking about that. We talk about something and say, this is important. We think, well, every um, cell has that. But it, it turns out that telomerase is really needed for cells that are dividing rapidly. So in the early embryo, cells divide really rapidly, and you need a lot of telomerase. In skin cells, where the where cells are constantly dividing uh, you need telomerase uh, to keep uh, to keep the uh, cells alive long enough to divide um, and that sort of thing but your typical cell doesn't really divide that much so it doesn't need telomerase um, and so then in a normal cell uh, the idea is that how do you know how many times you've divided and how do you know when it's time to go and it turns out that as the cells divide the chromosomes get shorter and shorter and the idea is that, so there's a chromosome, and then it gets shorter, and then it gets shorter, and then it gets shorter, and it gets to some critical length, and then it signals cell death, or senescence. So that's the idea, or at least the hypothesis uh, that telomeres play a role in, in aging. Um, and so, sort of the, taking that a step further, that the cell death is also thought to be part of aging of the overall organism. <clears throat> and so when these ideas were first um, figured out and when these people wrote this paper, they started talking about telomerase as the fountain of youth. That all we have to do is drink a big glass of telomerase each day and we'll live forever. But obviously it's not that simple. Um, but the press certainly likes to get excited about these kinds of ideas. Alright, so in this paper they want to test this hypothesis that that telomerase is actually directly involved in and responsible for extending the lifespan of cells. Um, and so what they did to test this hypothesis, and, and this is where it's, this is sort of the re real reason I want to do this paper is because they do very specific experiments and ask very specific questions. And each question is part of a bigger whole and, but each experiment only answers something very specific. So, first, they're going to express telomerase in cultured cells. So they got some cells that don't have telomerase, 
they add telomerase. And then now they have cells that they think have telomerase. But in order to tell if they have telomerase, they have to figure out a way to measure activity. So then they isolate and isolate protein. And they have a particular experiment that they can measure telomerase activity. Well, just because the telomere is active, telomerase is active, that doesn't mean that it's actively making the chromosomes longer. You actually have to measure that. So you have to measure the ends of the chromosomes. Um, and then, if, if telomerase is active and the telomeres are getting longer because there's active telomerase, does that correlate with more cell division and, um, and, and less senescence, really? So longer chromosomes would be, have less senescence. So that's what they're testing. So in the first experiment, so they add telomerase, they, they take DNA that goes for the telomerase protein and they add that to cells, but then they need a way to measure whether or not that enzyme is active or not. And so they develop this assay, or um, so assay is just another word for an experiment or a test, and it's called a TRAP assay. And TRAP stands for telomere repeat amplification. Say so T R A O N P C R P C R S A. And so what they do now, this is they're not measuring this in the cells themselves. They're taking proteins out of cells and then they're using this assay as a test to see if there's an enzyme activity. So this is an artificial telomere substrate that they have in a test tube. They just have a test tube and they take this DNA. They put that DNA in there. And then they add what they think is telomerase. And if telomerase exists, then telomerase will add these repeats onto the end of the chromosome. Not the chromosome, but the onto the end of this artificial telomerase substrate. So they're not this is not a natural thing. They're not asking, does telomerase work in the cell? Saying if we isolate the protein from the cell and test it in a test tube is there enzyme activity. That's very common to use to test for enzyme activity in cells. Um, this is kind of a different kind of assay for enzyme activity because it has this kind of special process. And then they use PCR to determine if these um, repeats have been added. So PCR is just, it's really like DNA replication in a test tube. So you have a primer and then we have another primer that matches up to the repeat. And because this primer matches up to the repeat, the more repeats there are, the more times it'll match up. And then you do PCR, which is a technique to amplify DNA between primers. And these two primers will give you DNA this long. And then these primers will give you DNA that long. And then these primers will give you DNA that long. And then these primers will give you DNA that long. And we radioactively label these fragments run them on a gel and see what they look like. And so if you have activity, you get this ladder. So all of these bands, because there's these bands, so this is our, this would be like the beginning. So we had this thing. And then each ladder has another repeat added to it. And then this one would have two repeats added to it. And this one would have three repeats added to it. So the presence of this ladder-like structure means it's positive for telomerase activity. So these guys would be negative for telomerase activity. So now they've, because they've added, they've taken cells that didn't have telomerase. So all these cells start out not having telomerase. Then they add telomerase DNA. 
so the, so the codes for the enzyme, then they take this cell and they test for activity. So all of all this is telling us is that that yes, these cells have telomerase activity. That's it. So they're not measuring the chromosomes. They're not measuring cell life or anything like that. They're just measuring does is there activity in these cells? It's just a it's just a kind of like a control experiment to prove that they have actually added the DNA to the cells. And when they did that, they got telomerase activity. So these are the types of cells, the names of the cells before. So these are minus telomerase. And for telomerase, they're calling it H-tert, so human telomerase reverse transcriptase. They call it a cDNA. Now that's just the DNA that they're adding. And then these are different clones. Um, or these are So they, they add these so they're using cells and they grow them on a plate and they get colonies on a plate and these colonies um, have had the DNA added to them and so they take that colony and that's clone T7 and that's clone T8 and they measure telomerase activity and then the 100 and 500 that's just how many cells they used in their assay so you should see you know so in each case you see more activity when they use more cells uh, let's see, and then this is their positive control. This is a cell line that they know already has telomerase activity. And it's important to use a positive control. Let's say that all of these things, they tested all these things and they, and they look just like they did before they added the cells or added the telomerase. Then if it, if it just looked blank like nothing happened, either they don't have telomerase and they're not expressing it, or maybe their assay is not working. So you need a positive control uh, with something that you know that if your assay is working, that you'll get a positive result. So now they've measured that there is activity that they can isolate from these cells and test those that activity in a test tube. Now they want to measure uh, the chromosome length itself. And so we got a little bit of a typo here. telomerase um, so does it maintain chromosome length so now what they're going to do is um, so this is just to review that when you have cell doubling when cells are dividing if there's no telomerase the telomeres will get shorter the idea the hypothesis is that if you add telomerase the average length of the chromosome will be longer so we need to figure out a way to measure that. We have to measure the specifically the ends of the chromosomes. So the way they do that is by a southern blot. And this is kind of an old-fashioned technique. I mean, back in 1998, it wasn't all that um, old-fashioned. People were still doing it. Um, and people still do southern blots for some things, but not very often. Um, but So this is relatively straightforward. We've got these blue bars represent chromosomes. And... Um, so you could draw it like this as well. That's the end of a chromosome. And then you've got your telomere at the end. And so we need to cut this chromosome sort of towards the end. We want to cut it so we can release the end so that we're just looking at just the end of the chromosome. And then we have a probe. So this thing's a probe that will hybridize to the DNA at the end of the chromosome. So we can just detect it. And so what we do is we cut DNA, run it on a gel. We're going to get all kinds of DNA sizes on this gel. But then when we transfer it to a filter and hybridize it to that probe, only the DNA that sticks to our probe is going to show up. Now in this case, the because we've got a lot of different chromosomes and there's some variation in how big those chromosomes are, and this probe it is going to recognize every chromosome because it's probably a probe that matches this sequence. So you get a little bit of variation. It's not just all one distinct band. You get a variety of sizes. 
but what we can see is that if the bands are up higher then they're longer but if the bands are kind of shifted down then they're shorter so when they did this experiment they looked at these different cell types where they had added telomerase and so this is one particular type of cell called RPE Whoops. RPE and these are some other cells called BJ cells um, probably the initials of the people that um, they got them from and what they're showing here is these are, are, are don't have any telomerase and these are plus telomerase and here we've got kind of a smear of of sizes over here but up here the average size has been shifted up <coughs> so the average size of the chromosomes is bigger and the same thing over here without without the telomeres without telomerase you get kind of a, a range of cells of, of chromosome lengths and but with the cells that have the telomerase you get um, on average you get longer um, chromosomes just at the end so let's get rid of all that all right so with me they did a southern blot they're detecting specifically the end of the chromosome they cut the chromosome in the same spot they hybridize it with a probe <coughs> if this fragment is bigger then it's bigger here so if we get a bigger fragment it's bigger and if we get a smaller fragment it's smaller so that's what they said is that it now in the same cells that they showed in the previous thing that they were detecting telomerase activity now they can detect larger chromosomes and then they wanted to look at um, so TRF, TRF stands for uh, telomere repeat fragment, I think. So yeah, I think that's what it is, a telomere or terminal repeat fragment or telomere re repeat fragment. Uh, but it's basically TRF stands for the length of the chromosome end. <coughs> so now as these um, cells are growing, so now here we got their doubling this many times and how long are the chromosomes well there's quite a range but these triangle chromosomes are bigger than the circle chromosomes and the circle chromosomes are H T R T minus and the triangle ones are plus that means they've added the telomerase to those cells and then down here they get they're looking at population doubling and they have a way to measure senescence and so the circles are again um, those that don't have um, telomerase. And you see the circles are being filled in, that means they're starting to senesce. And they have um, some kind of marker that they can use to measure. So you'll notice that, that these triangles have doubled more times and they're not filled in because they're, they're not senescing. The circles on average have doubled fewer times and they're starting to senesce. Here's one that isn't senescing and is, is dividing a lot, so you know, you're never get 100% of what you're looking for. And then this is just sort of a summary of that, where they did, went for more population doublings, and over time, they get, as they get more and more population doublings, the ones that are plus HTRT, and the ones that are minus HTRT, they live longer, they double more often, and they, it's not that they double more often, but they double more, more, more times, and they live longer. And that, so, so now what have we shown? We show that, um, we've demonstrated that yes, we have telomerase activity, uh, we've got longer chromosomes, And the cells live longer. So that so their hypothesis that chromosome shortening might have something to do with causing cells to die might have something to do with it.
Um, and then this is just a, a similar thing where they could actually look at senescence. This is showing this picture. So for some reason, um, this these cells express an enzyme that they can stain blue. So without worrying about the details of, of, of why, they don't even tell you why. There's this, they, for some reason, these cells stain blue uh, when they are senescing. And that's just been established before this. And so, so these guys up here are not blue, so they're not senescing. And these are senescing. And so these are clones C22 and C33. And these, so these are examples of, these are HTRT minus. And these are HTRT plus. And so these are not senescing. And these are... <coughs> <coughs> those are senescing and this is just a measure of this blueness of this blue the percent of cells that are turning blue the ones with HTRT plus are dividing longer and they're not staining for senescing these guys got a hundred percent of them are starting to senesce this other cell type cells living longer, getting fewer cells that show this senescent um, expression. And these guys don't live as long and they are senescing. And then this is just the very last bit. The note added in proof that um, so they kept when you deal with cells in culture you have to continually they, they grow and they grow and they grow and eventually they start to fill up the plate and then you have to take them and put them in another plate and let them start over again and then they'll grow and grow and grow but there are most cells you can only do this so many times and then the cells die uh, but these guys um, continue to divide and I think they still have them going now so I don't know if they've continually kept them going forever uh, but the idea is the big conclusion is adding telomerase allows cells to live forever. So that was the first demonstration that that telomerase might play a role in combating aging. All right, so keep that in mind as you go through and read more about telomeres and telomerase. All right, so we'll stop that one there and that one it will